Hey, me and Matt here, and I'm here with Killer Kyle as always. And this is another rendition of Wheels of Fury. Basically, we're going to talk about the events that happened in the past couple weeks. Uh, post WrestleMania. Um, yeah, post WrestleMania, the Superstar Shakeup. That's exactly right. Um, other things we a lot of surprises come actually. Yeah, but first of all, sure. so uh, first of all is the annual shakeup, and uh, why was it interesting? You have. Uh, well, it's basically whether Raw is going to be the better show now. Because you have Dean Ambrose, you have The Miz, the Miz you got Alexa Bliss, you have Mickey James. Mickey James. Basically, the same people that you kind of had on Raw. Well, on SmackDown, you have Charlotte, you have uh, <clears throat> Nia Jax, I think. Uh, Tamina. Tamina, yes, Tamina. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, you've got what well, was formerly known as the Shining Stars. I think they're just going to go by their names now. Epico and Primo. Colon. Oh, that makes a lot of sense, though, because the Shining, hey, the Shining Stars weren't going anywhere, as was uh, no. Los Matadores. But, when, well, see, here's the thing, though, Matt. It seems to be when they were Los Matadores, they had a far longer run than they had as the Shining Stars. Now, of course, when they were Los Matadores, they didn't win any tag titles, but yeah, the Shining Stars gimmick just no, it was kind of, yeah. It fell flat. Now, this begs the question... And it probably won't ever happen, but never say never. I wonder if they get Carlito to come back. Ooh, anything's possible, man. Because that, I mean. that makes a lot of sense. Not <clears throat> only is he a Cologne, but he's also part of the family. Oh, yeah. He's been in the WWE before, you know, so why the hell not? It's going to be interesting to see that. Yes. For um, sure. Also coming up is Payback. It's going to be an interesting show. Um, yeah, stay tuned for our yes, video that's right. about that coming up. Well, less than two weeks. Yes, that's right. So I think it'll be a week in a, on Sunday coming up here. Well, so. <clears throat> versus me it was uh, NXT. Yes, NXT was good. And NXT this is week. always going to be that, you know, great show. Unfortunately, I think reason being is because Triple H takes over that show and McMahon takes over, obviously, Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. Yeah. But in any case, uh, yeah, it mm -hmm. seems to be the better show for wrestling. Uh, this week you got, well, last week actually now, you got to see... The return of one Kenta Kaboshi, a.k.a. Hideo Itami. Yes. Uh, while Bobby Ruido was in the ring. And Talking about his NXT and how he got uh, Shinsuke Nakamura basically ran to SmackDown. And nobody's yeah. in his NXT. If you want to be in his NXT, fine. If not, get out. Basically. Yeah. And... Made Rude go night night. Yes, the patented go to sleep. What I find interesting is that here you have one guy from New Japan leave to go to the main roster, and he's replaced by the other token Japanese guy from New Japan. And I think it's pretty cool. I mean, and we've waited for a very long time to see. Um, Kenta Return. Yes. Yes, I'm going to use his real name. Suck it. <laughs> there it is. 
And so, before I go any further with that, though, what do you think of the new belts? If I haven't already asked that in the last video. I don't think we talked about that in the last video. I noticed with the NXT Women's Championship and the NXT Championship itself, they look very similar, just the NXT Women's Championship is a smaller size than the NXT Championship. And as far as the tag titles go, I don't mind the tag titles. They look very, like, all three of the titles look very good. Now that you mention it, yeah, it is true. The women's is a lot similar to the heavyweight, which yeah. is unfortunate because they could have fucking had, you know, a different, like, like I said before, though, WWE seems to run out of ideas. It's a shame. <laughs> oh, it's also a shame, as I heard recently, in very different uh, YouTube videos in YWC, the fucking Intercontinental Championship. I've hopped on the WrestleMania one before, so I'm not going to go there. The Intercontinental Championship seems to be tarnished. It's been tarnished for the last probably two years. You need, oh, well, actually, no, that's not true. I think it was three years. Because, you, you know, you had one of the years where they, they, they played hot potato yeah. with the title to eventually have, I don't know if that was the Daniel Bryan one. Or I think last, so. What's that? I think so. Yeah. And then <coughs> last year, you know, you had Zack Ryder win, which was awesome, but you took his chances away because, yeah. insert reason here. Mm -hmm. It really sucks because it, there's no fucking reason for it. Unless he's a terrible wrestler, you know. And they did that with Rey Mysterio with the WWE Championship. Yeah. You know, it's just politics. And um, you know, it's funny because talk about how they hot potatoed the Intercontinental Championship there for a little bit. Well, if you look back over the last year there, 2016, it was a good, I'll say, five months, roughly. They hot potato the women's championship back and forth between fucking Charlotte and goddamn Sasha Banks. Yeah, that and is Let's true. not take anything for, away from the two of them. They're very good yeah. performers, very good athletes, very good wrestlers, but... For fuck's sake, it seemed like for five months the only two women in the raw women's division were those two. Come on. When you do that, you diminish the title. Back in the day, you had three main titles in a WWF. A tag team titles, the Intercontinental Championship, the WWF Championship, and they fucking meant something. Nowadays, well, obviously through the years, they've added more titles, but... Right. Nowadays, it just seems that anybody can be the champion, and it just doesn't matter anymore. Right. Like, there's really no real defenses. And if you think about it, too, here's another thing. There are seven title reigns between the two of them, between the two of them, and this all happened within the last year, 2016. Yeah. So let's have four. Four. Four horses. Four horses. Four, 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 four. And Sir uh, Sauce is at three. So. Yeah. But am um, I still waiting for the potential heel turn of Sasha? Which. Potential. Knows. Potential, yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's been talked about happening, and there's kind of been little hints here and there of yeah. it might it might happen. It looks like it's going to happen, but then something happens, and of course, we change this. However, no John Cena this week, I don't think. I didn't watch all of Raw or SmackDown, unfortunately. Yeah. But from what I saw, there was no John Cena. 
No, there is no such thing. So, that's interesting to me. Um, kind of. You still get the whole Ms. Maurice <laughs> pretending to be Jones. Watch. Give it a fucking ass, guys. Come on. The joke was funny before WrestleMania. Anyways. I think, I think they did that one bit on Raw when they uh, came to Raw from the Superstar Shake-Up. And they did the whole bit with Dean Ambrose, but I think now they're just going to give that a rest. That was a good segment, though. That, that was, it was funny. You're not going to see me anymore. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, Dean Ambrose, man, uh, John Cena and Nikki Bella, it's so good to see you. I thought I was going to be the only one here, and I wasn't going to know anybody, but you're here, and it's so good to see you. And it's like, no, no, that's Burries. That's Burries. That's Burries. I'm the maze. Oh. And it's like, well, oh, in that case, it's 3D. <laughs> and people say that Dean Ambrose isn't cool. So, so there's that. Dirty deeds done by cheap. cheap. Dirty deeds on the done dirt cheap. Just had to build that with everyone. We have to do that. Speaking of, you know, oh, wait, well, we weren't speaking of it yet, but... Braun Strowman raising hell on Monday night. You know, I talked about when uh, AJ Styles beat up Shane McMahon. Yeah. And while the match was happening, they split screen to Shane McMahon coming to the ring. This kind of, well, well, this wasn't like that, but it was almost like, okay, so he beats up Roman Reigns. Okay, now he leaves. Then he takes Then he go to replay, and then he come back, and Braun Strowman says something else. Then he saw a replay again, and then Braun Strowman does something else. Yeah. And then it all lands, leads up to Braun Strowman supposedly maybe flipping over that ambulance. Yeah, you were talking, I remember you, we were talking about that. Yes. We were watching it, and it was pointed out that they could have, in fact, had something on the other side yep. of the ambulance. Well, it was originally pointed out that when uh, Strowman pushed that stretcher, off the loading dock. It wasn't actually Roman Reigns on the stretcher. It was a dummy. Because they said, you know how Roman's got that Samoan tattoo on his yeah. shoulder. Well, the dummy, apparently just the shoulder was, it was, there was nothing there. And then before uh, Braun flipped over the ambulance, you could see a shadow on the ground of people getting out of the back of the ambulance, and then, you know, Strowman flipped over the ambulance. Now, if you want to, if you get it, able to find the video of it, pay close attention, because they show an angle of Braun Strowman on the one side, they briefly show an uh, image of the back of the ambulance, of course, the doors are closed, but they don't show the revert the opposite side of the ambulance. So does that mean that they had maybe a forklift or yeah. whatever on the other side of the ambulance to aid Braun Strowman <laughs> yeah. in flipping over that ambulance? Because in the video, they said ambulances are 10,000 and 11,000 pounds, whatever. So let's say hypothetically, there was nothing on the other side of that ambulance and Braun Strowman actually was able to flip it over. Holy fuck is he ever strong. Yeah. Well more tricks to the trade I guess. Yeah. Um <laughs> but yeah so they could have poten like a potential they could face each other again. I think well what's going on at fa um not fast lane. Yeah. Uh payback, yeah. Um, Are they gonna have a match? I can't remember um because they still have Braun... Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about that, too. Braun Strowman and Big Show. Yes. So... Um, well, let's see. For setups to the film. Um, we're going to have... Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton in that... Uh, House of Horrors match. They're going to have... Uh... Jericho 
and owns for the U.S. title again. They're gonna have, uh, Alexa Bliss and, uh, Bailey for the Raw Women's Ch yeah, Raw Women's Championship. Um, and then there is a bunch of others. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get more into it when we do our video. For yeah, for sure. Our thoughts, projections, ideas, and so on and so forth for that. It'll be good. Um, but yeah, so SmackDown, we get a main event with Brock, uh, Big Show versus Braun Strowman. Not SmackDown. Not on SmackDown, yep. Yeah. And, uh, it's kind of interesting because they did tease at least three times that they... They were going to do a super play. Yeah. And then... And then they finally did it, and they, boom, there goes the ref. Finally did it, and the referee gets knocked down. Oh, yeah, poor referee gets knocked ass over a key card. Yeah. And, yeah. But fucking interesting, man. Like... And they seem to do that all the time, once in a while. Well, this is the third time yes. they've done it. Once was Big Show and Brock Lesnar. Here, here, here's yeah. a, a little side note, if you will. All three of the matches that happened had Big Show involved in them. Yeah, Big Show, Brock Lesnar, Big Show, Mark Henry. And then this one. And then this one. And, uh... Yeah, it doesn't. It's still w shocking. WWE, do yourselves a favor. Keep the big guys off the ropes, damn it. And he won't break the fucking ring. Yeah, but at least it was in the main event. True. So, in that case, that was okay. However, because they have the new glass on the side, where they show, like, the fucking images or whatever. Yeah, they got, like, LED board on the side. What? One or two sides of the ring. Yeah, I'm first. starting to wonder if that... Because I didn't pay that much attention to it, but I'm starting to wonder if that kind of uh, shattered or what when that ring collapsed. I don't know. Didn't really see exactly what happened with that, but well, who knows, it might have. Well, in any case, it'll be interesting to see what happens on Monday. And you know, it was funny, too, because when they first initially did the, were going to do the spot of Superplex, you look at the fans, and the fans were like, oh my god, this is gonna happen, holy shit. They were like, on their feet, doing like the yes, 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 and cheering and all that stuff. And then when it finally happened, basically, he could have blown the roof off the damn building. Holy shit. Yeah, it was definitely cool. So, there was, you know, that's Raw and SmackDown. Uh, NXT was good. Uh, I watched NA today, actually. Yes. And, surprisingly, it wasn't bad. No, it wasn't. But, there was a few things that... Didn't make any goddamn sense. Um, so, last week you had the three-person tag match. Four. Kind of, uh, well, not like a Survivor Series, but you got Team JB versus... Team Matthews. Team no, Matthews. No, no, Team Goat. That's right, Team Goat. <laughs> the greatest of all time, yeah, bullshit. So, unfortunately, the Team Wussbag lost... Bad. There you go. And uh, he was basically kicked out of um, TNA, and that's interesting because you know the guy's covered in tattoos. Yeah. So there was a one, one shot where he had his his fucking sleeve up, which kind of pisses me off. Here's a guy who's covered in tattoos, and he's always in the suit. Like Josh Matthews should have. Uh, change it as a tire somehow, I don't know. Because he pretends he's a punk, but he's not. I don't oh, know. Oh, he portrays like he's this big shot, badass dude. Yeah. Well, really, he's a 130 pound pissant. 
Pretty much, yeah. So that happened. The Josh Matthews team lost. And then this week, you had... So Jeremy Barrage and the Pope were there. And they're calling the matches. Unfortunately, something happened in the main event. Or no, well, no. It wasn't the main event. It was in the middle of the card. It was James Storm versus Bobby Lashley. But you had Bobby Lashley come out assisted by Josh Matthews. So he comes out. He puts a headset on. He's talking about how... Running his mouth and all this shit. And then, of course, you have EC3 come out. And he's basically, like, on the side of the fans, if you will. Telling Josh to sit down, shut up, all this other stuff. And then by the end of it, James Storm gets in the ring with a beer bottle, looking like he's gonna skull crush Lashley with the beer bottle. Here comes EC3. What happens? He'll turn. Heh. <laughs> Well, I didn't like his ass anyway, but... Yeah. Uh, here, you know, he reminded me of... Because, man, it's the same with The Miz, too. Uh, they can't play good faces. Like, they always come across as the guy who was a badass, and now he's trying to be good. But he just comes off like a big fucking dork. I don't know, maybe that's just me. And you know, it's interesting because last week when they had the fan vote for who was going to face Lashley, everybody yeah. picked Storm, and EC3 was like, well, I've been the top guy around here. I carried this company on my back. I'm a two-time uh, TNA World Champion and all this other stuff. And Bruce Pritchard was like, well, maybe you need to take a lo good, long, hard look in the mirror and go, what do I need to do to be that top guy again? And I guess EC3 felt that to be a, the top guy again, no, ref not really referencing uh, the revival here, but to be a champion again, he's basically got to go to... His original style, if you will, would be a bad guy. Yeah. Yeah, I expected him to turn heel then, but basically just said, oh, I'm going to go backstage and look myself in the mirror, pissed off, down the ramp, or up the ramp, no less. And so this week, or this week was the heel turn. Yep. Which, uh, okay, well, he seemed to be a better heel two years ago and he was with Spud. Yeah. So, fuck it. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. Um, you know, speaking of NXT and we obviously mentioned that to you. Uh, Drew McIntyre is back. I know more Drew Galloway. So now you, they just lost not only the Hardys, which I don't know what they're going to do in WWE now. There's major talk of, okay, we're going to bring the broken gimmick back. Which I think is stupid because you've already had him come back with the blonde side and the black side. You know. I don't really know if WWE would be able to carry on the no. broken hearty gimmick. Yeah, and that's too bad, really. Yeah. Um. Of course, she had the... The... 205? No. Uh, oh, the X Division. The X Division match. Yes. It's a... Uh, five, or five or six way title match for the X Division Championship. He had the champion himself, Trevor Lee, Andrew Everett, yeah. a returning Sanjay Dutt, a returning Loki, who looked like a fucking hitman. Yeah, yes. And this new guy. Now, Andrew earned a shot to face Shane Helms. Uh, yeah, Shane, it was talked about having a match with just Trevor Lee and Andrew Trevor Lee. Everett. Yeah. But then this week, Karen Jarrett was in the ring and she was talking about how 
Here's another thing. Global Force Wrestling and Impact Wrestling have now merged as one. Yeah. So she was talking about that, and then Sanjay Dunn comes up, and he's like, I'm back, and I'm one of the original guys. I've been here since, they said, 2003. Yeah. And, you know, I've never been X Division champion, so I want to be X Division champion. And then, you know, and Drew Everett came out, and he's like, no disrespect, but that title is mine. And then they did the whole... And it makes a lot of sense because, let's face it, he actually earned the right to face Trevor Lee. And this happened. I was bound for glory, I think. Anyway, so... Why not have a fucking five-way match? Well, it wasn't really a pay-per-view, right? Or no, and they never have pay-per-views. Regular impact wrestling. Well, they were live, so... Yeah. They were hey, we're live, let's do something big. Yeah, that's true. Um, but it was still a good match. There was one point in the match where Sanjay got a pretty... Oh, my God. Swollen eye. Fucking... That's, uh, that's like... I didn't expect that. It's, that's the most swollen I've seen someone's eye, I guess. Yeah. Like, I've seen shiners, but holy shit. Oh, yeah. Um... Don't know how it happened to him, but yeah, they, they didn't like they didn't show a replay of like, oh, this is what happened because Sanjay decided to swell up like a freaking baseball or whatever. Maybe next week we'll find out more about what happened, but yeah, it was wicked. It was crazy shit. It was a good match. It was a very good match actually. Low key uh, wins the X Division title, looking like a friggin' hitman. Hit with didn't, the suit didn't the take out the suit and tie or anything. Just <laughs> yeah. Crazy shit. Um, so that was TNA. Very good. It was a good show. Uh, again, we have... Oh! Congo Kong. Congo Kong. Making his debut last week. Now, I remember a couple years ago watching... And I can't remember the name of the Federation, but it was in Newfoundland... And I see this guy, Kong Go Kong, and he was a badass motherfucker that could take anyone out. So when I heard that he was coming back, when I saw him coming back uh, last week, as part of Wild Person's uh, Go Kong, like his debut, yeah, Kong Go Kong, coming out with uh, Laura and Vanessa, which... Still looks like shit. Yeah. Um, KM and uh, Sienna. Yeah, KM. I don't know what that stands for, but anyways. No idea. No idea, but he's kind of a dork, anyways. Yeah, yeah you're talking about the high scene. Congo Kong, Kong, Kong in Kong. Newfoundland, and I, again, I can't remember the name. The name of, of the wrestling organization, but you say it. He basically looks like this big badass who can take out anybody, and it seems like so far an impact. That's the way it's gonna be. It's oh, just yeah. gonna be that quartet's uh, muscle, if you will. Yeah. Although I thought that's what they brought in friggin' KM for. Well, this guy seems more like a legit monster. Yeah. His makeup that is fucking awesome. It'll be interesting to see what happens with them. I I got a question for you. You might think so. You might not think so. You might even go, oh yeah, or whatever. Does it kind of look like Congo Kong might would fit into like the Anawai Mon uh, Maivia family? Oh no doubt, no doubt. Uh, now you probably have to research it to see. If he is a part of that family, who he's really, who would be related to, but you know. Well, how, yeah, I could actually find that out. Sure, I think there's a lot of Simone in him. But like the face paint, it kind of reminds me of like uh, of uh, Buddha. Yes, that's right. But his mixed with Haku. Yeah. Well, the. Uh, 2003 Haku. 2003 Haku, yeah. Or Ming, whatever. Ming, 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. The big, the big Afro ish yeah. hair. But a legit badass, and I don't know who's going to stop him. Yeah. Um, also, they didn't, we didn't get to see the wolves. Or, well, Davy Richards and, uh, well, yeah, there was a segment. There was a vignette, which I thought was pretty cool. Not a vignette, but it was, uh. It was a backstage segment where they showed, well, there was a video, they showed Moose in Canada, I think it was somewhere in Canada, and he got attacked by, from behind by Chris Adonis. Now you WWE fans are probably going better as Chris Masters. Mm. And of course, he puts Moose in this Ad uh, Adonis lock. And so they do an interview with Moose. And he goes, I haven't forgotten what you did to me. So next week I'm challenging you to ask for the Grand Championship. Then Adonis comes in and he's like, wait, 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 wait. They doctored up that video or whatever. You attacked me and you broke my arm before he's got his arm in his leg. So I'm not going to be ready for next week. But I know somebody who is. And then freaking Davey Richards attacks him from behind with absolute love. And it's like, okay. I dug that statement. It was pretty cool. So it'll be interesting to see that match. Overall, you know, TNA was also quite good. Like, it wasn't the greatest. It wasn't... It wasn't the worst thing ever, yeah. but I mean, there was, that one thing, though, with Josh was just like, mm. what the fuck is wrong with you? Exactly. So, all in all, that was an interesting show. Um, so we talked about Tamina earlier. Yeah, let's get back to that. Who's on SmackDown. I read, so I read, I read a lot of these things on Facebook. Yes. And it's all talking about uh, David Benoit, the first child, well, first marriage child to Chris Benoit, who, well, we know what happened. We know that. 20, 10 years ago, you know what happened. Well, we should do a video on that, actually, when it comes up in June. Yeah. So, there's been a lot of speculation over the years, I don't remember how long the year is, but they're basically saying that David Benoit shouldn't be in the WWE because of what Chris did and all this other stuff. Which, A, okay, he is not Nancy's kid. No. So, he was never involved with the murders. He's Canadian, so I assume Daniel was American. Whatever. Probably. Then you get the fact that you have Tamina Snuka, who, despite, like I already knew, but despite learning after Jimmy Snuka's death that he murdered that person, his girlfriend, in 83. Well, first of all, committing adultery because he was married. And then killing this person. Yes. So, you know, he got off scot-free, obviously. Right. Anyways, so we could get, you know, Tamina coming back into the WWE. But we can't have David Benoit. In WWE. In period. WWE, period. It, so it seems to be what they're doing is they're holding what Chris did to himself, his wife Nancy, and his autistic son Daniel against David. But they're not going to hold what Jimmy Snuka did to his girlfriend in 83 against Tamina. Which I can understand the one side of it, but the other side of it is like, what the hell? It's well, 10 years ago. Get fucking over it. Well, and there's that. But there's also the fact that I mentioned before, David is from Benoit's first marriage. Yeah. So there was nothing, there was no, the only thing that's, you know, there is he kind of resembles Chris Benoit. So there's that, but who gives a shit? It's, exactly. 
you know, yeah, okay, whatever, do what you want, any you're gonna do what you want anyways. But anyways, uh, so, it just pisses me off, but there it is. Yeah. Anyways, so there you go. You have a decent, well, a good raw, actually. A decent SmackDown, which is weird, because it's always the other way around. Yeah. But now that you get some of the best wrestlers on Raw, and a potential Shield reunion, because, uh... Yeah, now you've got all, all three, three of them in their own face. On Raw. Yeah. With Dean Ambrose jumping. So, but, there's that. Yeah. You know, and now, and then TNA, which was pretty good. I mean, it wasn't the greatest. There could have been things a lot better. I mean, you had, well, there you have it. Um, this is ODB. ODB. One Dirty Brisco, or I Love You, I yeah. love that. All Dirty Bitch, I don't know, I can't remember. Old but... Dirty Bitch, One Dirty Bitch, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, Rosemary won, obviously, so... It was a good show, I yeah. think, you know. Again, when I go and we talk about NXT, the only thing that I didn't really enjoy was the ending to that cage match. Which is a shame, because I really enjoy the cage matches and Hell on the Cells and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you could basically say the match with Ty Dillinger and Eric Young was a strong match with a weak finish. Yeah. But anyways, it's uh, going to be interesting what happens in between a Payback. Yeah. I almost forgot the name of the yeah. pay-per-view. Over the next week leading up to pay, right? Yeah, exactly. That's also what I meant. So that'll be cool just to see that. Well, we will do a payback review show or series. So stay tuned for that. Yes. Um, One thing we touched on briefly, but I think we should talk about it a little bit yeah. more. Uh, uh, okay, we got the Superstar Shake-Up. But before that, the night, the... Raw and the SmackDown after WrestleMania. You got Raw, you got the debut of the Revival. And then on SmackDown, you had Shinsuke Nakamura and then Ty Dillinger. Yes. So, between the SmackDown and the Raw after WrestleMania and then the Superstar Shake-Up, the landscape of Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown has changed quite a bit. Yes. Well, you didn't see... You obviously saw Shinsuke come out to the guy with the violin. Yes. And just stand in the ring and take in all the Shinsuke Nakamura chants. Yeah. What you didn't see, however, was the dark match, if you will. Where Dolph Ziggler comes out and they jaw jack for a bit, and then Dolph Ziggler goes to do a super kick. And what I really enjoy enjoyed was because Shinsuke is so cool. So he grabs his foot and he like does this or yeah. pretends to cry or whatever. He's like, No, you're not. Then he annihilates Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> not more she's like, You're you think you're gonna kick me? No, you're not. It's going to be an awesome match yeah. when it happens. So, looking you know, looking forward to what happens on Payback. Looking forward to seeing Hideo and Tommy actually have a, a good feud yes. with Bobby Roode for the title. Um, of course, you know, TNA with... Uh, so... Uh, there it is. So, for our mean Matt and Killer Kyle here, yeah, do you have anything else to add before we go? Do you talked earlier, you mentioned earlier about how WWE has seemed to run out of ideas. Yes. Have you noticed over the last little while there have been some similarities between WWE and Impact? Uh, well, like how? Okay, allow me to elaborate. Yeah. Okay. 
It was WWE that first came up with the idea to use a three-man commentary team, minus 205. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. You've got, well, right now, you've got Michael Cole, but, um, oh, shit, Michael Cole, Corey Graves, damn near forgot his name, and Booker T. Yeah. Last week. But and, and, and eventually it's going to be David Otonga. And on SmackDown, you've got JBL, Tom Phillips, and Byron Saxton. Go over to Impact, you've got hey, Jeremy Borash, Pope, and Josh Matthews. WWE started bringing back previous wrestlers to either induct them into the WWE Hall of Fame or have them wrestle again or take a, have maybe a position of some kind. I mean, you got Kurt Angle, mm-hmm. who is the general manager of Rock now. You got Mickey James, she's wrestling. You've got like uh, Scott Hall and Jake Roberts in the WWE Hall of Fame. This year, DDP went into the Hall of Fame. You got the Harleys back wrestling again. And you go over to uh, Impact. Hey, here's Magnus. Here's Chris Adonis. Here's uh, Loki, Sanjay Dutt. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be others oh, in yeah. there as well. So, I don't really think necessarily that WWE has, is running out of ideas, but it seems to be WWE and Impact Wrestling are kind of copying each other somewhat. No, no, yeah, and that is true. I think what I when I said that, though, I guess what I meant was they're running out of ideas for the Intercontinental Championship. True, yeah. So there's, you know, the Intercontinental Championship and then the U.S. title. There's no real prestige. There is less prestige for the main WWE title yeah. than there is for the U.S. title. For now, yeah. anyways. Yeah, I mean, you got Kevin Owens, who's proclaiming, excuse me, face of America. Okay, fine. You go on the over-the-top heel road, if you will. That's fine. But on Raw, he has a U.S. title open challenge. What, did he steal that idea from Cena? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I never thought about that either. <laughs> That's what I thought of when I saw that. It's like, real original. Did you steal that from Cena? Yeah, I guess I didn't really pay attention to the whole TNA, uh, WWE uh, similarities. But you brought that up, and what I forgot to mention, I wanted to also talk about this whole shit that everyone else seems to talk about and their opinions of this whole... But Mauro Ranella... Mauro Ranella with JBL. Yeah. Now, JBL's known to be kind of an asshole. Yeah. A bully, if you will, to most of the wrestlers or the yeah. staff backstage. And somehow it got on to Mauro Ranella. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure exactly what happened. No. But now Mauro's just out of the WWE... And back onto the MMA circuit. Yeah, he's he went. He's got. Uh, I don't know how long he's going to be there. He might be there for a while, but he went to. I guess you could say Japan's newest MMA fight promotion, Ryzen. Yeah. And he made reference to one of the competitors coming from a pro wrestling background into MMA, and he goes. Boy, does it feel good to say that again. Uh-huh. So, I get that to me was kind of hinting at the fact that uh, Moro may, may not have liked the superstar uh, lingo, if you will. And he yeah. prefers the pro wrestling yeah. terminology. But, I mean, there's so many people that are old school, if you will, and still stick with pro wrestling. 
No. They don't really call it sports entertainment. No. Sports entertainers. It's pro wrestling and professional wrestlers. I mean, John Cena a few times has made mention of it in promos he's done about him being a professional wrestler, not a sports entertainer. So, I mean... Yeah, um, I agree. Triple H actually made a comparison on the Stone Cold podcast. Yeah. Of the two differences between a professional wrestler and a sports entertainer. Right. Which I can't remember exactly what it was. But see, here's the thing, though. When I was a kid, yeah, okay, there was a show called Superstars, but... Yeah. It was wrestling. Professional wrestling. wrestling. That's what it was. That's what it fucking should be. And it was like that up until... I can't remember. But see, that's the thing, you know, because I also heard, too, that when Vince the Sr. died, then Vince Jr. took over yeah. and... Put more entertainment into the value. Yeah. So, when Ted Turner called Vince McMahon, he says that he's in the wrestling business. Hey, Vince, I'm in the pro wrestling business. And Vince goes, I'm in the completely different business because I'm in the sports entertainment business. Yeah. And, you know, you can put all your fancy language, fancy terminology, word it differently. But the fact of the matter is this. It's pro wrestling, and they're pro wrestlers. Bottom line. Exactly. Now, nowadays, it seems like... Like... Okay, who has really a pro wrestling background now? Yeah. Because they're all bodybuilders, or... uh, I mean... Gymnasts. Yeah, but... I think we talked about this in a previous video we did months ago. The top background you're mo- you're most likely going to find wrestlers have come from is football. I mean, you That's got right. John Cena played football in school. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. Steve the, Austin. Steve Austin. The Usos. Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. But there are. A f- Wrestlers that are uh, Ron Simmons, Farouk. Yeah. He played uh, football for the Florida State Seminoles. Uh, but, I mean, you've also got wrestlers that came from a professional football background as well. I mean, you got Brad Pillman, who played for the Calgary Stampeders, I believe. Uh, Jim Neidhart was nose tackle for the Oakland Raiders. Uh, I made a mistake in one of my videos in saying that Randy Poffel played football, but it was actually baseball. Yeah, he played baseball when he was younger. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's my bad. So, yeah, I mean, they do play other sports than wrestling. They eventually go to it. They well, go- it just seemed to be what they did, you know, in school or whatever before they got into wrestling. But this whole idea of sports entertainment, I could see on one hand, because in pro, in WWE, well, WWF at least, you had the football guys, you know, in WrestleMania 2 in the Battle Royal, you had yeah. Lawrence Taylor at WrestleMania 11. Yeah. So, you had other sports, so yeah, other sports in, with other sports. You get the entertainment aspect, which some of it's good, some of it's not good. Which yeah. is basically just talking back and forth or <laughs> trying to be funny in some way or another. But now, granted, there are things that these guys have done that have been has been entertaining and funny. Like what we were talking about earlier, Mason Marie's portraying Nikki Bella, John Cena. Yeah. Or you got, you know, Dean Ambrose with, like, the hot dog cart. Or, uh, turning off Baron Corbin. Or, uh, you know, various things they've done that have been really good. I mean, 
How many times did Bobby Heenan get called a weasel when instantly he just go off the rails and start yelling at people to stop it and all this other stuff where you got, you know, Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan on commentary and yeah. back and forth between the two of them. Or you had, like, Gorilla Monsoon and Jesse Ventura, you know, Jesse calling Tito Santana, Chico Santana, and, you know, the Flying... Gino Monsoon. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the Flying Forum, the Flying Burrito, or whatever. Yeah, well, you know, you had a lot of cool excitements back then that could be entertainment. Yeah. Well, look at how many vignettes the fu the Bushwhackers were in. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, there was a video that I saw in, I believe, 93. Well, I saw it in 93. I think it could have been uh, that old or maybe a year older. It had the Bushwhackers and Lord Alfred Hayes. Right. But then there's a segment with Yokozuna and uh, Mr. Fuji eating food. Right. And just seeing Yokozuna put away sushi or whatever he was eating with chopsticks um yeah apparently i heard there is a few guys that uh would go to a restaurant with yokozuna to have dinner or whatever this would probably be like before the show after the show whatever and the bill was quite ex excessive oh, because yeah. yokozuna was such a big dude and he ate a lot of food yeah so, I mean, I don't know. I call I always call myself a wrestling fan. Yeah. Uh, sports entertainment's only part of it. Um, uh, but I think with the whole Vince, just sticking to sports entertainment was bullshit. It's an insult to the athletes, yeah. you know. Um, I'm not sure how we got on this topic. <laughs> it was, just but, randomly. But you know, it it's just like okay. And you know, another thing about it too is, okay, yes, you've got these guys that do things outside of WWE, whether it be movies, commercials, TV appearances, late show, late show appearances, uh, make a wish, all this yeah. other stuff. I think also too nowadays, and I'm sure it happened back then with Make a Wish. It's breaking key feet. So you get the heels, yeah. the supposed heels of the WWF or WWE, who break key feet and be nice to the sick patients. Yeah. Or do something silly. Or, yeah. And you get a lot of people go, well, that's stupid. That shouldn't happen, but. Well, I mean, there was that video I sent you. It was like a, a send off for. The revival Nakamura and Ty Dillinger, yeah, and friggin' would they had Bobby Roode involved, and they were in the Rado, Texas, I think it was, or whatever, and start singing I Got Friends in Low Places by Garth Brooks, and then give friggin' Bobby Roode a stunner, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's uh. Or, you know, the four of them beating up Bobby Roode, and then it ends up being Shinsuke Nakamura with a Kinshasa, and Bobby Roode goes outside of the ring, or whatever. So, as much as people might think it's stupid or it's silly, it's. The, the WWE P guys, girls, are basically a family. Exactly. They're around each other a lot more than they're around their own families. Now, granted, they might take more days off of wrestling than they did uh, years ago, but they're still away from their families a yeah. lot. And the thing you got to remember, too, is those people aren't really monsters. No. I mean, you take a look at stuff like uh, the Owen Hart tribute or the Eddie Guerrero tribute. Yeah. And you get both faces and heels. And unfortunately, well, I guess to keep from breaking cave, they had their name titles as is. 
Like, it wasn't Paul Levesque, it was Triple H. Right. But, you know, he's crying about, yeah. you know, crying, talking about Owen Hart and his family and yeah. how close of friends they were. Right. And all the while, this is the guy who just started becoming the game. Yes. And beating people's asses. Yeah. So there's that aspect of it that, yeah, they're, they're professional wrestlers and they should always keep in character, but there's no fucking reason. For them to do it all the time. To, yeah, for that to happen all the time. I mean, how you even look at Kane. You yeah. know, the big red machine, the devil's favorite demon. Yeah. He's going to the ring, checking ass, setting people on fire, whatever. But yet, you look at him outside of it, and he's running from been, been referred to as one of the smartest people to, that wrestlers know. Yeah. I mean, you got Rhino running for governor of Michigan. Michigan. <laughs> Terrence Guido Ger Gerin or whatever his name is. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, this video is getting pretty long. Yeah, we've managed to make it over an hour yet again. Ah, uh, shit. That should have been for the pay-per-view. Oh, well. Uh, anyways, well, I mean, do you have anything else to add before we go? Uh... I think we pretty much covered everything. Yeah. We wanted to. Yeah, like I said before, Raw was good. Uh, SmackDown was decent. <laughs> TNA was meh. It was okay, actually. I kind of enjoyed it. But anyways, so anyways, for uh, I said anyways a lot. Anyways. Anyways, for me and Matt, and this is Killer Kyle, and this has been Wheels of Fury. We'll see you at the payback. With you, or uh, prediction show. Yeah. Talk to you later. Deuces. Later.